And that's a very ugly flop. Let's see what Michael does here. Uh, let's see if he goes for something like a 4 or 5k bet, or even like a 7k bet, or something like 1500 to 2000. King 7 offsuit is a pretty loose open raise. It's actually 501k, not 501k, 2k. So it's a pretty loose open raise, but there's an ante out there, which makes you a little bit looser. So call by uh, Timothy Kuznetsov, who, who is a... Uh, who is True Teller, arguably the best poker player in the entire world. Not at No Limit Hold'em, he doesn't play that game very often, but overall, you could say he's the best uh, player in the world. And so he defends Ace-2 suited, which is pretty standard. And we're going to see an interesting spot here. Victor can do a couple of things. He can go for something like a very small bet, something between $1,500 and $2,000. In this game, $1,500 to $2,000 is a small bet. Or he could go for something for like a five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 bet. Okay, so he does go for, uh, for the small bet. And I don't think Timothy is going to do anything else but call. He's got no kicker. He's got no backdoor flush draw. He's got no backdoor straight draw. And he calls. Turn is a nine, and Victor is going to pre be pretty happy here. He knows that True Teller can have a hand like king nine or ace nine, but that's about it. So if he's... If he's uh, good on the flop, he's most likely good on the turn. And there's a lot of bluffs he can use here. So Victor goes for an overbet saying, hey, I've got a lot of strong hands here, a lot more than you do, and I'm going to apply a lot of pressure. And I can easily balance this with a lot of bluffs. And True is probably thinking, well, my deuce is not very good, but I do at least unblock a lot of his bluffs, like Jack-10, for instance. And so he does continue, which I think is probably the best play, unless he thinks that Victor is not capable of barreling aggressively. But I mean, we're playing 501k here, right? I mean, people are definitely capable of doing so. And Victor here definitely is going to value bet. He can get value from an ace. Um, not really from many worse two pairs, maybe 9-7. And yeah, maybe he gets called by ace nine, which is okay, right? When you value bet, you can't just bet when you have the best hand 100% of the time. You've got to take a bit of risk. And so Victor goes for a three-quarters pot bet. That's kind of what this hand is worth. And Truto is thinking, well, I mean, man, so many hands miss, right? Six, five, 10, eight, jack, 10, queen, 10, uh, maybe like an under pair, maybe some random hand. And so he does decide to make the call. And Bill Perkins shows ace four, which would have been a winner, but I like the fact that he folded. So Bill opens 10-6 suited on the button, which I think is, uh, is a good play. I mean, it's not the greatest hand, but even on anti, this hand is an open raise. And Nick Prochangelo should three about his hand 100% of the time here. Okay, so he goes for a pretty large three bet to 15 big blinds. And we see a pretty loose call by 10-6 uh, by suited, but not a big deal. So ace-a6 is a very good board for Nick. He's going to be sealing this board very aggressively and very small. So I'm expecting a bet which is about like seven, eight, nine thousand. Seven, eight, nine thousand. Okay, correct. Bill goes for the raise here, which is a little bit unorthodox. Uh, it's not a board on which you usually should be doing a lot of raising because, I mean, you just don't have very much, right? You're going to have sixes here, maybe a6, maybe like ace-queen. But you're not going to have aces, right? You're not going to have as many ace-kings. So a bit unorthodox here. And he gets called by Nick. Nick's thinking, well, I block ace-jack, and I beat some kind of weird overplayed hand, and I beat all of his bluffs, obviously. And let's see what Bill does here. If he's in the mood to gamble, he will shove, but... If he shoves, he's going to get a fold by Nick, almost for sure. But the thing is... Nick could easily just have called him with an ace, right? And he would not be uh, he would not be getting a fold. And so Nick's thinking now, well, can I turn my hand into a bluff here? But what am I making him fold? Am I making him fold a queen here? Am I making him fold a king? He shouldn't have either one of those hands very often. Let me just check and hope Bill had a hand like, you know, 6-7 suited, 10-6 or whatever, 10-9 suited. I imagine Bill checks behind. And Nick must be pretty happy to win this hand. This could have easily gone wrong. When you call the flop, this is about the best thing that can happen. Jack-10 suited is 100% open raise, and jacks are going to be 3-bet, and Jack-10 suited will be called. Eventually. These tournament players always like to uh, take, uh, take their time. 
Easy call. I don't think this hand is going to be four bet very often. I don't think this hand is ever going to be folded. Just got a call. And Michael's in, a, in an interesting spot. It's a spot in which you can use many different plays, small bet, medium. You can use a big bet and try and shove the turn, right? Even check raising would be a cool play. Jax is a very good hand here, but there's a lot of ugly runouts for you. I mean, any ace, any king, any queen, a nine is kind of ugly, an eight's kind of ugly, a six, even a seven is not the best. And so he goes for the big bet. And Nick's thinking, well, I've got two overcards and a, and a straight draw. But then again, I'm going to get shoved on quite a bit. Turns the queen, which is better for Michael. Not for his exact hand, obviously. He doesn't like this card. Um, Nick, you know, which queen does he call? Does He calls hand like ace-queen suited on the flop sometimes, but he's not going to hit this queen a ton, right? Maybe he floats hand like queen-jack sometimes. And so uh, Nick does decide to go for the bluff, thinking, well, Michael's going to have a lot of hands like nines, tens, and jacks. I can pressure those. If he were bluffing, a hand like king-ten suited on the flop, I can just make him fold. And on the river, let's see what Nick does. I think he's going to bluff shove this one all in. It's not the worst hand to be bluffing with. And he does shove, and he's trying to get Michael off hand like queen-10, queen-jack, jacks, tens. Maybe hand like 8-9 suited. Maybe some type of stubborn ace-king that couldn't fold the turn. And so I think Michael probably, in theory, has to call this one. I think he beats enough hands that uh, this one does become a call. His blockers are not fantastic, though. And his hand is like, you know, it's decent. So, you know, if he thinks Nick is a big nit, he might be able to let this go. If he thinks Nick is a very capable guy, you know, who can bluff enough, I think he should call this hand. Nice hand. Yeah, so I mean, it looks like Nick just dumped off $100,000, but I think his play was good. I don't think there's a whole lot he could have done. He could have maybe waited until the river to bluff and saved himself some money, but you can't just do that every time, right? Jack-10 is uh, is not the greatest hand, but it's an easy open raise, and I like a defend with Queen-7 suited. Mm -hmm. And pretty good flop for Luke. I mean, top pair with a good kicker. He also blocks pocket queens. And so gas trader checks behind. You could have bluffed a hand like this, you know, two over cards and a straight draw, very little show it on value, but it's fine. Wow. And Lucas ends up betting thinly on the turn. Well, he makes a thin looking bet, but his hand is definitely worth more, right? If we go back here. I mean, there's 6,700 in the pot. Luke's hand is worth easily full pot, but he decides to go small here. And gas trader ends up floating in with the jack 10, which is kind of loose. But it's not loose, uh, loose if you hit. And so Luke is thinking, well, does, does, does Gastria have an overpair very often? Probably not. Does he have a deuce very often? Probably not. Does he have a jack? I mean, it's possible, but I think he will go ahead and bet. And I do, so I do like Luke's bet here. You could have even gone a bit bigger. And Gastria now snap min raises him, basically. Min raise plus like $500. So, I mean, this is ugly, right? You have to put in like 3,500 more. Um, you have to put in like 3,500 more, well, like 4,000 more to win a pot of 25K. So is Gas Trader just randomly doing this with King Queen enough of the time to make this call? And I can't blame Luke for calling here. Gas Trader wins a nice pot. Ace Queen, easy open race in many position, even on under, even under the gun in full ring. And Queen-8 is a pretty loose call, but remember, there's a lot of antis in there. So it gives you a better price. Gastrader checks behind with Ace-Queen here, which is very interesting. Um, I would recommend that he just bets his hand. I mean, his hand is really, really good, right? He's got top air, top kicker. He's got the the nut flush, uh, the back row nut flush draw. I would definitely go ahead and bet this one. And when Michael sees this turn, I mean, he must be super happy, right? He's thinking, well, Gastrio checks behind, so it's unlikely as a queen. Maybe he has one, but with another queen rolling off, there's only one left. How can I be beat? So I assume that uh, Michael is going to want to make this pot quite large. Eventually, of course, because he's a tournament player. So he goes for an overbet on the turn saying, hey, I've got more trips than you, buddy. I'm going to be punishing you. And so when he gets raised now, he's like, what, what the hell, right? He just min-raised against Lucas. He made a crazy play earlier with the 10-6. With the what is this guy up to, right? What, what is this guy up to? So Michael's never, ever going to fold. I do think he'll just call. 
Does Gas Trader check behind sevens or deuces here? Does he really check behind a, a better queen? So I do think Michael should be calling here. Keep Gas Trader's bluffs in, the, in there. If he is behind against the trap, he's going to be quite far behind. At, le at least that one might save Michael some money. You know, maybe Gas Trader checks behind. I don't think he's going to be betting huge here. It would be interesting if Michael goes for a very small lead. It would probably work. If he bets 15k on the on the turn on the river, he probably just gets a call. Whereas if he Yeah. Whereas if he checks, Perkins might bet 35k. So I'll be pretty surprised if Perkins does anything but call. Mm-hmm. And he's definitely upswinging. Nice run so far. This looks to be an open raise on the gun and a call on the big blind, big blind by Luke Reeves. I don't really see why you would 3-bet King-3 suited. I mean, having a King-high flush draw is nice. Having King-high is nice. But you've got a 3 kicker and your hand is not connected. And that's a very ugly flop. Let's see what Michael does here. Uh, let's see if he goes for something like a 4 or 5k bet or even like a 7k bet. Or something like 1500 to 2000. I can see both plays having a lot of merit. And Michael does bet about two-thirds of the pot. And Luke's, I mean, he's kind of in a shitty spot, right? Because yes, he's very happy. He knows he has a lot of EV in this hand. Well, on paper at least, not in reality. Uh, but, you know, once he check raises and gets it in, I mean, this is going to happen, right? Michael is likely going to be betting here. Maybe he traps and, you know, checks behind and pot controls a little bit because he's maybe afraid of ace-3, ace-jack, queen-10. And Michael does go for another two-thirds pot bet. And I don't see any way uh, that Luke does not just uh, keep on calling. He might beat a hand like, you know, ace-queen or ace-10 for value, and he beats all of Michael's bluffs. And if you fold two pair, you're quite exploitable. And Luke must be very happy to see that river. Very happy. So 5-6 suit is going to be an open raise, and let's see what Victor does. He could end up three-betting or calling. I predict... Call. Yep. Okay. Trutel is getting a great price, but his hand was so bad he couldn't call. Ace Queen Deuce is a very good board for Michael's range, but it's a terrible one for his hand. I mean, he's got no pair, no draw, no backdoor flush draw. He's got a backdoor gut shot, I guess. I at least it's a gut shot to the nuts. And Victor's not going to be stabbing this board very often. I mean, it's not a very good board for him. Let's see if Michael does something here, some type of thin valley bet, or maybe turn his five into a bluff. I do think he's going to end up betting. Wrong about this one. Finally, I'm wrong. And now Victor's thinking, well, I've got a flush draw. I've got an overcard. Should I take this one away? If I bet, I can get Michael to fold a hand like pocket sevens or a hand like a, a better king high. I can maybe get him to fold a queen or at least fold it by the river. So let's see what Michael does here. I think... I think all three options actually make sense. You could end up check raise bluffing here, turning your hand into a bluff, trying to represent the nuts. I think I could see a call happening, unblocking Victor's draws. I could see a fold happening, thinking, well, I don't think Victor's bluffing enough, and my hand is kind of kind of shitty. I predict okay, check raise. Let's see. Okay, wrong again. And now, tough one for Victor, because on the one hand, he's got king high, he's got hearts in his hand. But on the other hand, it's pretty difficult to have nothing here, right? Some of his king-10 bluffs get there. He can easily have hand like pocket fives or ace-5 here or ace-jack. So he's got a decent amount of value hands. But he thought, well, this hand is so bad a bluff, I don't need to go for it. But right away, he gets aces. Easy call by Michael. Maybe you can 3 bet at a low frequency. Mm-hmm. Uh, the deuce is definitely better for Michael's range than Victor's, but it's not like Michael's calling an insane amount of deuces here. And Victor's likely just going to bet small. Makes a lot of sense. And Michael's thinking, well, I've got two over cards, back to a straight draw. What should I do, right? I think all options make a lot of sense here. I actually don't mind this play. It's quite aggressive, but I don't mind it. And maybe now Michael's saying, well, I block 6-4, I block ace-4, I've got an overcard. Well, two overcards, so that may be live. Maybe he turns his hand into a bluff, let's see. Would be a pretty aggressive but cool play. Got the double straight blockers, PLO style. Except it's, uh, this one is paired. 
Michael goes for an overbet on the turn. Um, you know, so he's saying he's got at least a deuce here. If Michael check raises and like five, six of spades on the flop, he would just be checking the turn, right? Or maybe he'd be block betting for value, but he wouldn't be over betting. So he's repping a very strong hand. Victor's definitely going to call here. Makes sense. And now this river, I mean, Michael cannot rep a whole lot of hands, right? Because, I mean, okay, he can rep a deuce. A deuce is worth a value bet, but he's not repping a five anymore. He's not, I mean, it's going to be difficult to represent a straight. Or maybe M Michael thinks, hey, you know, if I bet something like 45,000 here, I can still end up, uh, I can still end up betting with a straight, right? Victor could be calling me with an over pair, or even something like ace high. Victor's just praying Michael checks. And Michael actually goes for the shove here, which is a pretty crazy play. Uh, as I said, it's kind of hard to rep something, right? It's kind of hard to rep. Obviously an awful spot for Victor. He's thinking, what is this guy bluffing with, right? Is he turning in like 4-3 into a bluff, a flush draw? Does he just have random two over cards? Does he have some type of straight blockers? And Victor ends up making the call here, which I definitely agree with. And ends up taking down a huge $280,000 pot. Nice hand. King-5 suited is an, uh, is an okay hand. Definitely an open raise. Even non-anti, this is an open raise. And so this is going to be an interesting board, right? Both guys are going to mix it up quite a bit on a board like this. Let's see what Michael does. I mean, he's got an over card and an open ender, right? But he really doesn't want to get check raised. It would be kind of annoying to have to call here. Truth is, got a straight, and this is a board in which he's going to have far more straights than his opponent, far more deuces, far more sevens. And so he's going to value bet this card very liberally, and versus such a, versus such a small bet, there's no way you can fold with your five. Let's see if Michael can find a bluff raise on this river. Truth Teller is going to bet almost for sure. And let's see what Michael does. Again, I think all three plays make sense, just like about 20 minutes ago. Calling might make sense if you think your opponent is bluffing enough. Bluff raising may make sense, blocking pocket fives, and folding may make sense if you think your opponent just isn't bluffing enough or you want to, to want to call with this exact hand. So Michael does call, putting True Teller on a lot of hands, like, you know, 9-8, for instance.